Okay, what's up everybody? It's Tuesday. I'm popping. I don't know about y'all. Kinky. D-Nast. We're like sure. We got the legend in the building. Hello. Uh, Mr. Ryder J. Clyde. What's Mob up? figures in the house. What's popping? Not too much. So nice. Chilling. Yeah, out here. Mm -hmm. So how did they go? Um, they didn't go so well, but you know, can't complain. Crashed my car coming from the barber shop, so I'm a little bruised up right now. So if you see me moving funny, that's what it's from. You crashed your car? Yeah. What happened? <laughs> I don't think I want to tell that story. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to avoid an animal from getting killed. I understand that. I understand that. So, that, was, that, was, that was nice. Uh, took out a room, I think. Oh, yeah. So, um, what you got going on? What, what you got projects coming out? Yeah, um, it's today the eighth on the eleventh. Got a DJ Fresh album coming out. DJ Fresh, DJ the Fresh, second DJ Fresh. DJ Fresh tonight show, I believe. You know, we cooked up. So yeah, I've been working. And you got a clothing line? Well, you know, I wouldn't call it a clothing line. I think you know when I got a project coming out, I put some. Some little gear with it. Some okay. merch. Some merch. Okay, that's a vibe. That's yeah. a vibe right there. Yeah, I started doing it. Um, one of the studios I had was like in a, like a little department area. Um, Cat had a t-shirt store. He was going to do some time. And he had no more use for them t-shirts, so he gave them to me. It was a bundle of them. Yeah. And I took it from there. That's tight. A little, a little gift. Yeah, I do a little. Um, Artwork, digital. Shit, I used to draw when I was little, so I get on the computer and dabble with the Photoshop, do my own little designs, and go straight. Get them pressed up. Are you gonna start putting your stuff out online? Yeah, I got a. a, a it's, it's, it's on it's online on now. Um, big big, big cartel. cartel yeah. But I'm saying, like, even like, hey, I'm at the house putting this shit in. Let me let me show y'all this little thing I did today. Yeah, I, I did that a few times. Yeah, a few times. Mm -hmm. So um, how this shit, the process of it go. Right. So you got, so is, would this be called The Tonight Show too? Mm -mm. Or it, it would be a different name? Matter of fact, I don't even think he called this one The Tonight Show. I think he do The Tonight Show and then the album after that is just the album. Mm -hmm. you know so my bad for The Tonight Show too. You know, I don't think it's another Tonight Show. So it's a DJ Fresh Rider J. Clyde album mm -hmm. okay. called Pueblo Esco. That's what it's called? Yeah, it's like a little playoff of Pablo Esco, but mm -hmm. I'm from El Pueblo. Hello. So El Pueblo Project. Esco. You did. Okay. Okay. I, I like a little salt. <laughs> and that's my that's my hustler. Hustler. You know. Yeah. Um, so I, I was actually I was listening to the first tonight show earlier. And to me, and tell me if you disagree. Okay, Shoot. but it it was like it was real chill. Like I feel like you could really roll, like ride on a nice little day, smoke some weed. It was like real vibe. I was surprised it had a lot more, a, a few more songs than like for the ladies. I would say yeah. than I than I would have expected. Wow. Um, Why? I don't know Why because that? when I listen, a lot of the music that I've heard from you is like you know like aggressive like real hood street music you feel me so when i started listening to it, i'm like okay starting off on a little sweet note and you feel me and it, and it was like a little smooth you feel me and was that first one i don't think it was sweet it was you know i'm 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 a player too. I'm from the back. I'm core player. Yeah, no, I mean, players. yeah, like it was like a smooth little sauce. Yeah. Like, hey, come here, bitch. Come here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was listening. I was like, okay. Um, so for this project, what what is what what is the process? Like, do you have a vibe you're going for? Do you are you? You said it. That's my vibe. My I'm the rider. You said I ride, ride it. I, I, I like chill. mellow shit. I'm yeah. really not to turn up, cat. Yeah. All the time. I have my moments, but. That's why me and Fresh, I think, connect good. His music is kind of like that laid back, yeah. chilling vibe. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? And then me and him get in the studio and work. He ain't one of them producers who want to send his music through the email. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, yeah. We get in there, and that's how it started. You know, we get in there with Rob Lowe, we be in there cooking up from scratch. One of my favorite, one of my favorite like producers. Instant hits is what we used to call it. From five minute beat, boom. Cook that bitch up. So, 
Yeah, I like the chemistry fresh. That's how I be coming out like that. Plus drink. I mean, well, yeah, drink, gang. Yeah, because we do be toasting. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fresh like the sip, that bottle. And, so you're you know, a Hennessy man? I used to be. I used to be Hennessy privilege. But I had to stop because it's very loud. And you know, you get pulled over, you roll down that window, but that's all they smell. Yeah. Mm. First the question they gonna ask you is if you're drinking, you gonna say no. Nigga, you're <laughs> So yeah, I switch to vodka if I drink it. I drink occasionally now. You know what I'm saying? I've been in it since a tiny Tim, so as I get older, I gotta you know, slow down to where those are picking up. So I don't want this to be a, okay. We got a lot of stories. I'm gonna try to pull out some stories, but before we go into it, you know, you know, you you real mature. I see a little bit of them hairs on the beard. What do you, you think you gonna let it go all white? A little I might, fox yeah. Vibe? I think I will. I think the girls like that platinum. Come nah, that's a vibe. That. That's a vibe. You, you know got that saying? tone. Mm -hmm. You if, if you let it go to a silver fox, you when it come all out this, I'm just like, let my beard grow all gray. Keep my shit black up here. Look at that. You gonna look like a Dominican Raiders. smooth sauce. <laughs> you know? Come here. Yeah, a little papi chulo. Yeah, that's what they gonna like. Uh-uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna Watch how many people you see coming with that gray beard, trying to go dye that shit gray after I do that. Okay, <laughs> sip on them, okay. Ow. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so we got a lot to talk about with you. You, you were there from the beginning. So. I was been um, there for a beginning of a lot of shit. Yeah. What you talking about? What well, let's let's about? start with the mob figures. All right. So how did how did how did your involvement in that come about? Well, say well in Pittsburgh, which is where it originated. You know the mob figures because we're not all from Pittsburgh, but that's where we were all at the time it came about. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a small town, wasn't that many, you know, people rapping. This is kind of like the drug game. Yeah. You know, early 90s, well, early, late 90s, whatever. But I used to rap. I had like a little mixtapes. They wouldn't call them mixtapes, but these little tapes we do at little studios. I had one out floating around. Jack, I had one of his own. Hustler was in the studio. We, was, we wasn't even a group, you know what I'm saying? We were just five niggas from the same area that rapped. And it was, it was some cats from San Francisco had a record store in Pittsburgh on railroad. And people used to come there and do in stores. This particular day, it was AWOL Records. And SIBO wasn't there, but it was AWOL Records. It was Mr. Malik. Y'all remember Mr. Malik? From, from my time. Illegal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on a Monica song. Like, he was dope. Oh, shit. And Lil Bruce, it was a few AWOL artists. They came to Pittsburgh. There's was a cat named Bobby G. I think he was a manager over at AWOL. He was like, Sebo was in jail. He was looking for a group, some artists. Now, AP being from, he was living in Fillmore prior to coming to Pittsburgh. So, you know, they called AP. I knew he was rapping and shit. I just so happened to get in the car with AP that day. They called him. And AWOL records up here, woo, y'all might want to slide through. We slid through. I called Hustler. Hustler called Jack, Jack called Fetty. We all met up at the store. And everybody bust a rap. We bust a rhyme. They Mercy liked history. it. Yeah, they liked it. Told Bo that it was some, some dope cats in Pittsburgh. The day Bo got out, he drove to Pittsburgh, had us meet at the same record store, picked us up. We went to the studio that night in Fairfield with Mike Mosley and recorded like three songs. That nigga Bo kept us for like two weeks. He didn't even take us home. He stayed with that man on the road for like two weeks. That's great. What was that? What was that like? Cause y'all was that was what that was 17, 18, 19. Yeah, Hus was the youngest. Hus was 17. I was probably like 19. Yeah. Something I mean, like what was it like being on the road? That shit was dope. It was coming from sitting in the hood in the projects all day to jumping on the road. About some, you know what I'm saying? Something that we love to do. Mm -hmm. We felt like it was on it. Because we was on the road, we was on the road before we had an album out. We because he put us on a tour with a lot of the AWOL cats, like Lil Rick, Killer Tay, they had albums out. So he was like, you know, I'm gonna put you on the road with them just so y'all can see how this shit is. And yeah, we went on the road, then we came back off of the road and jumped straight in the studio. 
So I'm working on that album. Are you still uh, in contact with Sibo? Hell yeah. <laughs> like a motherfucker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's crazy though. Like, uh, we had Hus not too long ago. It was like, you know, that's over 20 years, you know, of, of y'all being in the game, but also like really growing from, you know what I'm saying, young men, children to adults, you know what I'm saying? So now the OGs. Yeah, because we, like he said, we could have, shit, we could have stopped after that album. Mm -hmm. We could have went on. Because there's a lot of people who do that. Drop an album, you don't hear from them no more. Yeah, we've been putting in this shit like over 20 years. We got offsprings. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it's a blessing. I like that shit. I love it. Something I wanted to do when I was still doing it, jumping on them planes. Yeah, I mean, I, so a few questions come up. But before I get into, um, I wanted to say, so, mm -hmm. damn, I shouldn't have smoked. Nah, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, I, it's it's crazy because I mean, you guys met up with Sibo and you just went with him on the road for two weeks. I mean, I can only imagine how many people missed out on opportunities like that. Man. You know, like oh well, I can't. I gotta go to work tomorrow. Oh, I got this or I got that, and never took that. And, you know, the opportunity. I mean, you did, and y'all kept that pushing. was the sacrifice. Like shit, yeah, no job to go to. I was on the road with crack. You okay. know, then, like, <laughs> I might have been on the hell on the shift and calling. They, they, they on their way to come get y'all, and I'm coming <coughs> with it. <coughs> man, man, it was just a sacrifice. Like mm -hmm. this was like around the time. I, I know in my circle, I, my circle was only rapper was I was one like the only rapper. Me and Freako. Us was a little couple years younger than me, you know, us being, uh, me freaking on us being from the same hood, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm speaking on. Like, it wasn't, that, that was around the time that most, a lot of people wasn't trying to rap. So, you know what I'm saying? I didn't have a lot of rapper brains. So, it was sacrifice. It was like, you go to the studio, this wasn't an instant sing the beat. You had to sit there a few hours when that beat getting made. They got to track out every sound and, and all of that. And you bring your niggas with you to the studio, hey, man, I'm missing money. I ain't sitting split here with your ass. Real quick. Like, come in I'm next sorry. time. My bad. Yeah. Oh, oh, not to date you, uh, but uh, the must say I mean, so not to like put it on, on years, but was that real to real times? Would you, when yeah, yeah. Y'all doing real, real reels. Been, man, I'm just saying the real reels to the ADATs. And I come from pause recording. Right. <laughs> and so. pause recording. Yeah. Damn, that's crazy because now, like, I've been in the studio with people where they create the beat right there and I get irritated. I'm like, look, call me when that shit finished, well, okay? That's what I'm saying. Like, back then, that, that you probably wouldn't have lasted. Bro. You had to sit there a lot of times, hours before the beat. Depending on how many sounds in that beat, you might be there hours. That's why a nigga, yeah. like, you might just hear the drum track with a bass line and another sound. I don't want to sit there all that time with that beat load up. Waiting for that? I feel it. That's a it's different now. Nigga, send the beat. I'm going to load it up. Blue. That's why everybody rapping. It wasn't like that when we came in. You had to put in that work and hope somebody noticed you. You know what I'm saying? Because that studio time, that shit was costly. And it wasn't like it is now. You know what I'm saying? So, hell yeah, that shit felt good. Because you had to really grind. You know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, it was worth it. The yeah, Mob yeah. Figures is one of the, I mean, the biggest imprints, like, uh, um, you know, definitely in the top legends of Bay Area culture and rap music. Um, I know we got to talk a little bit about the Jack is Death earlier, kind of off. Um, could you just tell us, like, you know, I mean, we were all shocked, you know, for that to happen. Like, how, how was that when that happened? Like, how did, you feel me, like... Oh, shit. It was shocking, just like for everybody else. I mean, that was, I, well, not to say it like that, but out of the five of us, that was the least one that I would have expected for something like that to happen to. You know what I'm saying? Um, I was in the studio that night. I got the call. My partner, my partner Banner called. And he was like, Jack got shot. I mean, I'll be hearing shit all the time, like stuff all the time like that. I ain't really paid no mind. So I'm telling man, call PK. And when PK phone and come on, I was like, I got the voicemail on the first string. That's when I kind of felt something was wrong. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, man, that was a blow. That was, that was a heavy blow right there. Hella unexpected. Really, really like, like the last one you would think. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Good news. Rest in peace, my nigga, man. Rest in peace, Jack. Yeah, absolutely. We had um, Huss on here uh, a few weeks ago, and mm-hmm. he had said, you know, he it's like he's looking around now, and it's like he's like the only one left, you know? It's like all these people he had come up with, they're gone now. Do you often like catch yourself feeling that way or like really just sitting back and thinking about because you've taken a lot of losses? Yeah, all the time. Yeah. All the time. Cause a lot of like, them, like, like I had my right hand men like took from me, like not like a friend from a long time ago and you ain't seen him in years. I was just talking to me some. You know what I'm saying? Like multiple times. So a lot of times and that shit will set me back. Look, you know, I might be working on a project, and a lot of times that happen, I would be, be like, I'm throwing a child with this. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, they keep getting too close to home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But. So, you know. I mean, you're still doing music. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, I, I don't know, I probably wouldn't be able to, I gotta keep doing it. Just like her said, it's like I'm obligated to do it. Every time something happens, I feel like I'm gonna stop. Feel like I got that obligation every time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. Good. I guess we take the good with the bad. Yeah. Just roll with the punches, man. It's a it's a, it's a crazy business. Mm-hmm. You talk- especially but not to cut you off, nah, but to nah. be coming I'm from cutting you off. You go ahead. But to be coming <laughs> from you know what I'm saying, being in the streets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And participating in all kinds of shit to jump into a whole nother lane and still have to deal with worry about if shit gonna pop up. You know what I'm saying? Or if I'm gonna jump on this plane, I'm gonna come back with who I left with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, but that shit was, it was a lot of times that was, it was hit hard. Yeah. Well, so going back to kind of like the mob figures and then y'all just coming up and doing that. So who like, get, I mean, just, I would like to hear like, you know, some background on it. Like, what was it like being a part of that group, making music <laughs> with Hustlin', Jack, and AP and, you know, like it was crazy because we, like I said, we wasn't a group, but we all knew each other. Mm-hmm. So now we, and we became a group that night when Bo came to get us. And that's what a lot of people don't know. We made the name that night and everything. Right? <laughs> we went there, we did the three songs. I remembered it because I, I want to tell this part. I remember this part because we did the three songs, and the first song was "Ride Till We Die." And we were sitting in this room. He had already told us, man, y'all need to come up with a name. So we sitting in the room trying to come up with a name. And Hus came up with the name. He was like, man, my figures without, you know, one word. And this was like around the time Pac, um, yeah, he had just passed. So, and Bo and Pac had a good relationship. He was just on all eyes on me. We just started all just, it just messed. It just made sense. Shit, we did that, and Bo came back in the room. He had, we had just did the one song, and he looked at me and said, "You go in there and do another verse, bro." I was so juiced. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I'm the nigga." <laughs> I'm the nigga. <laughs> nah, but I'm he did dead. that, and um, man, we he took us to his house, man. We got man, it was five of us. Ain't nobody. He came and took picked five little niggas up, took him to his, took us to his house, had us on the road with him, like. Like, you know what I'm saying? That shit don't happen all the time. Not at all. Yeah. At all, that shit's hella rare. Yeah, so looking back on it, it was like, you know, it was meant to be. We shot for it, and, you know, we hit the target. Was there, Bam. <laughs> was there anybody in the group? Cause you know, like I'm in a little rap group myself and right. I'd be feeling like, okay, if I'm coming on a song with this person, right. I'm really finna be raw, cause this nigga cannot eat me. Okay, is there anybody like that where you were like, we still like that? Yeah. That, rather we admit it or not, it's always competition amongst the yeah. kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, you sitting in there and watching him do his thing. Oh hell, you might have to change your shit. <laughs> yeah, bro, I'm not finna come after that. <laughs> Man, it's always competition. It's friendly competition. Yeah. Is there anybody that you are you able to not rank, but like who, who would you say like is like Cole? You know like. This nigga about to get on, this nigga about to go wild. Jacka. Jacka, he was, he was one of my favorites, man, even before we was a group. Like the songs he would put out around the town. And man, one of my niggas from the hood come by playing that. And I was like, boy, who was that? And nigga Jacka used to put out some cold shit for, you know what I'm saying? If y'all out, he was around the Pittsburgh area around that time, you heard them songs. And him and Fetty was a group. I don't, don't, we can't forget that. They was a group before 
they had a song out on a compilation called Sax Senior. And they was a group called Fatal Mentality. They had a song on there prior to the Mob Figures album coming out too. So we was experienced, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We was experienced with the rapping and shit. You know, and it just made all made sense when we got in there. Mike Mosley and Sibo. Mike, Mike Mosley. Yeah, That's crazy. just imagine that around that time. Yeah. That's the, one of the creators of the mob music and mob sound, him and Sam Bossy. If y'all know y'all history, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let me, uh, <laughs> so there's uh, recently. Why you laugh? You don't know your history? <laughs> no, I just laugh. Right. You, know, just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just laugh a little chuckle. You know? <laughs> um, Jack History Month, uh, Neff mm -hmm. put out the song uh, featuring you out there. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Which is a sample uh, 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 Get Out There. Which I mean, is one of my favorite jacket joints, yeah. and also like <clears throat> personally, I'm biased a little bit. I love the video because the video, the interview that's in the video is the interview I did with Jack, one of the first interviews oh, I ever did. That's what's yeah. up. I didn't know and, that. But I mean, like to get on that joint, like this is you know that's one of like a, an amazing song. That the first album is to me is a classic. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an instant underrated classic. So to be on this song. Did it bring back certain memories of like during those times? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it took a while for me to even write the verse. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like when people are doing the mixtape songs and you hear a beat that you like or the song and you know the song, it's kind of hard to just write some new lyrics to it. Yeah. So, but yeah, it, it brought back a few memories, but we got to dig it. I think that nigga never did his thing on it too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I always got to be a part of that. He reached out. We made a part. But yeah, it was kind of mm -hmm. difficult to do it. It was still fresh. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's still fresh. Like, I don't know about his passing, I'm saying, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, we pulled it off. Shout out to Neff, too. You, um, so just just bringing that up and Neff, what are your thoughts like on the Bay Area rap scene now? Shit, I wish they'd have been about I wish we'd have been dropping that mob for God about this time. <laughs> they caught it right when it was the right time. I love the bass scene right now. This is how it's supposed to be. You know yeah. what I'm saying? This is how it's Definitely. supposed to look. I love that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm still a fan. I've always been a fan of the music. So, you know, we're doing it like we're supposed to be doing it. Mm -hmm. you know, it's looking right. You know what I'm saying? So, can we expect a uh, mob figures? Tour, a uh, reunion. I don't know. We probably can. I mean, we should. I would, you know, but I don't know. It's mixed feelings with it because Jack ain't here. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I've seen how that shit go being a fan of the music. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I don't know, but I think the fans would want to see it. If the fans would want to see it, I'd be down with it, but it's not something I'm shooting for, I don't think. I understand that. Yeah. You know What's a, uh, give us a story, you know what I'm saying? I mean, 20 years, yeah, the group, I mean, y'all have been together for years. I mean, is there any stories that you can remember, whether it's on the road or in the Man, studio? a lot of stories. I don't tell one here, like, I can go, what kind of stories can I tell? I Man, we good, we here, so. No, I got one that I probably can tell. <laughs> I want to get was, one also that you can't, you feel like you can't tell. That's what I'm <laughs> okay. We'll get into a little of that. But it was a seminar, a music seminar called The Gavin. Y'all familiar with that? I know that name for some reason. Hey, say, y'all got me feeling like a real OG up here. Y'all don't know about The Gavin? Y'all gonna have to Google that. Yeah. I'm the Gavin. All right, so it was a music seminar. And this was, like I said, we was on the road with Bob with A-Ball before we had an album out. Yeah. So this was one of them particular times. We didn't have no album out. We was on features on a lot of albums, mm -hmm. but we ain't had no album out. We just now trying to see how this road shit is. But we, should I even tell this story? You should. You like, you, you know, that shit. All right, so um, the music seminar was over, and there was a bunch of flyers that was handed out during the music seminar. And so now we in the room, looking at the flyers, trying to see what event we finna go to. You know what I'm saying? And one of the flyers was a Luke had a boat, like a boat, and he was letting a uh, hundred people on, and he had a hundred strippers on the boat. Uncle Luke. Yeah. Yeah, Uncle Luke. Oh, yeah. So it was a dude who drove the van we was in. He a roadie for like a lot of people, 
And he say, you know, the whole trip, he talking about all these people we know. Like I said, we this our first time on the road. We think this nigga bullshitting about everybody he's hating up. So we get to the show, to the little event, and we say we want to go to this Luke show. And he say, I know Luke. <laughs> and so enough, we get to this to this man to this boat, and the people let him on. He going down to the boat to get our passes. We waiting on him to come back from the boat. But while we waiting, we get into a little altercation with some people. All I know is I looked and I seen somebody had Fetty in the headlock. I said, shit, I picked up a chair. You know, I'm ready, about a buck 25. <laughs> Slung the chair. I see Hustle. I'm over there. I see Jack, man. We on this big target, man, that won't let Fetty go. Then all of a sudden, we see the, the rest of them. They took you know, MC Ren was with him. That's the story, the top of the story. MC Ren from NWA. I guess them was his bodyguards. And they came through the crowd trying to move everybody out the way. They pushed Fetty, man. They don't push the wrong ones. So they run MC Ran up out of there. After the fight and scuffle over, here come the roadie who was with us with our passes after all of the fights. And he was kind of upset about him taking so long coming back with the passes. <laughs> and the, our law protection was in the vehicle, which he had the key to. And so we took it upon ourselves to do what we did to him. And if y'all know the situation, like Freddie T, he was the one who owned AWOL and he was in jail. And when we got to the room, one of our phones rang and it was him. That was what was crazy about the story. I just think he was called us in jail. It was like 98. We just called our cell phones from jail. Like, man, what happened with the roadie, man? I guess we told him what happened. We ended up switching bands. They put us in another band with somebody else. And that nigga boat was just fell out. Was he saying we, you know, we Took these niggas off the road, these niggas beating people up. <laughs> All kind of shit. But that was a funny story because we always saw about it because they ran them, she ran up out of there. Shout out that's to them, she ran I'm a big NWA fan. Okay. <laughs> but that, that's what happened. Shout out to the tongue and uh, bodyguard, okay? You got what you deserve, apparently. Yeah, he okay. had my nigga Fetty in the death lock, man. You got him fucked up. You know what's, uh, what's interesting? This is my like my theory. I'm like a conspiracy theorist on hella shit, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that a lot of the artists that have longevity in in, in the game um, are heavy heavy students of of the music of everything that goes around. And as you're saying, as you're talking about you know you're talking about the Gavin, you're talking about you know MC Rand, all these different yeah. people and things that are happening. I see like it's not just I'm in this for the for the, for, for the business. But it's also I'm in for the love of the music. Yeah, because that's what, what, what fell in love with the music before you, you know what I'm saying? You can try to think about rapping or even think that you could do it. I know I did. I, everybody know me. From, like, if I jumped in the car with you, your CD mission, I'm probably one with it. <laughs> everybody in my hood tell you that. Like, I always was, like I said, when it wasn't popping to be a rapper, that's what I was wanting to do, even with my sack on me. You know? that's, so yeah, um, did I get your question? Yeah, <laughs> who, 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 who are your too much? I, no, I that's it. I'm, 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 I'm hearing it. I'm digging in. Who are your influences? <laughs> oh, like growing up, like who, who are you listening to? Spice One. I was like my first song I wrote. It was like to a Spice One flow. Spice One, and then like I was telling her earlier, I had a um. It was a cat who had found, like he was, he was a producer. He used to do beats. He was really a DJ. And he, he was doing beats and he kind of, you know, he took to took liking to me. I was mm -hmm. youngster then. I was, I was real young then. But, and he had a Nas tape in his side. And I had, remember Nas from being on some, some album, some song, but his name caught my attention on his tape. And yeah. I took the tape. Automatically became a fan of Nas right then and the whole Queens and this thing. So Spice One, Nas, Scarface. Face my up. Um, anything though. I was like a fan. I was a fan of a lot of people. JT the bigger figure, the whole GOP movement. We was all fans of that. Rob Lowe used to think it was JT. <laughs> shout out to Rob Lowe. Yeah, hey, shout for out real. To Rob Lowe. Rob Lowe, the reason we doing this shit. Yeah, I, I mean. That's that's also it that shows. That nigga's a fucking genius. Yeah, like, nigga, he's really a genius. That nigga was dope, young nigga. Like, he was, woo. Flashback to them times, boy, in the garages. Yeah, Rob's an amazing guy. 
So, okay. So what, before we move forward, what would, what, what is one, what was one of the most, or what is one of the most fun things or fun aspects of being a part of the Mob Figures? A fun aspect of being a part of the Mob Figures? Um, I don't know. I guess sharing all of that, everything that we did with somebody, not being on that journey by ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's one of it. You know what I'm saying? We, Cause we like, still stick together like brothers. We still stay in contact with each other. And you know, we still doing what we do. So I guess that's one of the part of the one something, you know, sharing it with somebody, not going on that journey by ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know? Was there any, or is there anybody that you like from them that you was like, okay, if I really need advice or some guidance or somebody that could give me some sound feedback, this one would call. Meaning what, like, what you saying, what you say? say like again. if you ever needed advice on something or <clears throat> just someone who, you know, whose word you really like, you know, guided you or like you took into consideration heavily? Well, I don't know, there's a few people. I know, I have to say right off the top, so Ted, I know, he was managing both for a while. He um, named Life. He um, he locked up right now. I, I, I used to call him because he know who was born. You know what I'm saying? He don't give me the feedback I want to hear. You know what I'm saying? I like to talk to people who talk back. So I had to say life, oh boy, life, free life. Free life? Free life Crack 60. The gates for life a 60, yes. What That's about something. within the mob figures? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, cause we, <laughs> no, Fetty, 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 me and Fetty talk like that. Mm -hmm. Everybody, that other niggas hot is, hot heads, man. Like, you know how Hush is, Hush going, he a joke for it. Hush, you know what yeah. I mean? Hush blah, blah, say anything, but. You know, me and Fetty, me and Fetty at that level. Yeah, yeah. Black man, I call him black man. Shout out to black, black man. man, okay. Out of everybody, y'all two have seemed like the most under. You know Who? what I mean? Like me you, Fed? yeah, like you know, AP Nine. You know, got the TMZ. <laughs> you know, all, all that. That's action packed, man. That's what the AP stands for. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jack. You know, um, who uh, you know, I would say was probably. The most known out of everybody. Mm -hmm. You got Huss hanging off fucking lights and shit at shows. Like Turning up with the kids uh, and but, shit. Yeah, like FedEx and, and Ryder J. Clyde have been too. That like we don't see that many interviews. Yeah. You know, it's just it's only the music. And I'm wondering, was that something that was a conscious thing? Or is it just yeah. like I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm just chilling? It was just I'm just chilling. Like I said, like about all of the deaths and all that mm -hmm. kind of kept me in the cuts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Made me like a little hoarder, a little, what they call the one cat stayed in the hotel with Introvert. the pajamas. Yeah, I, like, I don't know. And then I was interrogated a few times when I was younger, so I really ain't a fan of interviews and big lights in your face and stuff. Oh, sorry. But it's a part of the whoop whoop, so, you know, yeah. sometimes you just got to come out of your comfort zone. Well, we happy to have you here. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a different and that's vibe. That's what made me say, you know, I watched it, you know, a few times and I liked it. I dug it. I think that's it's a good look for the bag and the whole little movement. So yeah, man, I'm I'm there. Let me be I'm, hey, put my face on it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, shout out, shout out to Dina, shout out to me. Okay. Sure. Shout out for to sure. Fizzler, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's let's talk about Dre. Okay? Yeah. How Let's how was that? So I actually, he is man. So I listened to uh, Fly Gangsta start to finish. I, I was telling you earlier. I was listening to um, Prince of the Projects, and you know it, it really did sound a lot like Nas to me. Like I heard it, and I'm like, oh okay, you know. <laughs> but then I go, you go into it further, and you just getting into your music. You have a very classic, like you know. Bay Area sound. And I guess it's not really classic because you guys are a part of the, you know, the people who created the sound, I feel like, and evolved the Bay Area sound, you know. Um, but what was that process like? You know, 2012, you signed, or um, 2012, 2002, you signed with. 2005, I think it was. 2005, okay. I think. And then you released the project, um, Mac Dre Presents the uh, Fly Gangsta. Right. Uh, a year later? 
Because Dre passed in 04. It was after he passed? No, that came out before. that. Mm -hmm. The one that came out after Dre passed was what's really Thizzy. Right, right, right. But Black Ain't Shit, Dre was here. But you signed, excuse me, you signed the Thiz after he passed? No. Okay. Um, nah, and then I wouldn't even really say I signed. I was just, because it wasn't like that. I, yeah. We didn't have no meeting and it wasn't like that. Like, I, we was already, like, fooling around. Like, because if you go back, I was on the Revelation 3, mm -hmm. a few projects prior to him. Because... Thiz was already there, but a lot of people don't know. Like on a lot of them old Dre CDs, Thiz was there, but it really popped off when he did Tizel Washington. And I was around prior to all of that. You know what I'm saying? I just wasn't on Thiz. And he wasn't even trying to cook it up like that yet. But when he did come, and finally be like, man, I'm trying to get up this label, woo woo, I'm trying to do this, I'm trying to have these artists. And I was one of the pick of the litter. And then that's when he came, and then we got the album going. But yeah, I think it was 2005 when the album came out. Okay, okay. And it was difficult with the album come out because somebody ran off with the masters and all kinds of shit. <sighs> but it happened and we got it out. And then, yeah, then Dre passed, came back. And then Disney Nation popped off and put out the second album. But yeah, I was already signed for, for mm -hmm. Verbal, I know what you mean. Verbal contract. <laughs> right, right, right. So how so how how much of the process of creating that project was uh Dre part of it? Hell of it. He produced like people didn't know Dre produced beats. Like he did like two or three beats on there. Like Dre was trying to man, he was man, he like had a plan, man. Like he was had a plan and I was part of the plan, basically. He wanted his Stiz label to be big. You know what I'm saying? He wanted like the top artists. Like you probably heard me say before, he wanted like the cheap the sneaks, the messy Mars. And so he was, he wanted that. And he wanted, he wanted a Mafia album, but he threw the meeting, we all sat down and I kind of told him that wasn't, well, he ain't gonna do that. Everybody ain't gonna do it. So that's when me and the Freako thing came about. Cause me and Freako, it wasn't even supposed to be a Roger J. Clyde. It was supposed to be a Roger J. Clyde Freako project under the Jigs. But that didn't take place either, you know what I'm saying? Because Freako passed prior to, you know what I'm saying? It was just a lot of stuff going on, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? I get the times mixed up a little bit. But, you know, he, he was trying to build the label. And I was just trying to do my part with that before and after the year. You know what I'm saying? That's how I even brought Johnny Cash over. And it's crazy because I used to let Dre hear Cash music while he was here. You know what I'm saying? And a little bit before we went to Kansas City, I ran into Cash. And then I would say, Kansas City, that's the trip. And we went to Kansas City and the, the little stuff happened to Dre out there. And when I came back, I was just stuck to my word with what I left with Cash. Like, shit, I'm bring you over there. We're just going to do what we do. You know what I'm saying? We had the studio out here in Oakland. I had the key. She loaded them, gave me the key to the studio. So I had access to the studio to work. And that's when we went there and did the Mob Money Gang album, me and Cash. Yeah, man. Um, you're King Freako, for people who don't know who he is, can you just give like a little, uh, uh, can you give us a backdrop and kind of a, a, a history lesson of who he Freako. is? King Freako was about a year older than me. Um, Freako was a little, little man. Freako had a heart of a lion. He was a little beast. He was locked up in CYA prior to us doing the Mindfuck album. But prior to that, me, Freako used to rap too. So me, him, and Hustler, you know, we, and Rob, like, it, we used to do so much music. And, you know, one of the times we was in the studio, we was, it was me, him, and Freak, and we was, me, Hustler, and Freako, we was finna do an album. It was gonna be called 100% The Kind. So you might hear me and Hustler like, say that a lot. He was finna, we was gonna be called The Kind. And, but the shit with the mob figures popped off when Freako was in jail. And he came home, still was rapping, and that's when he started the Ghetto Stars. Like it was like four of them, and it was five of us from my figures. Him, Dub 20, School Nitty, and Young Uzi, they did the Ghetto Star. And, you know, Freak wanted to make it. He, he, he was just, man, I don't know, man. Freak, that was my boy, man. He yeah. was just hard to speak on him because he, he would just, he would just have to know him. He was a Scorpio. He's a little savage, man. And they go, Dre loved him. Dre loved that boy. And he wanted us to do the album. 
He never popped off. He got killed at the LA. What was it? All Star Weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. So besides that, we go a little, 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 little soldier, man. You got to listen to his music, and he'll tell you. He gonna tell you. He gonna introduce himself. You know what I'm saying? Listen to his music. He'll tell you who he was. That's uh. I mean, that's uh, I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it in your voice. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing it like it's. Yeah, it, it, he was one of the, just that's you know he was one of them ones. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, and I, you know I wish he was still here. Yeah. Show needing baby. Yeah. Well, Show this needing. might be like the mom in me, but I'm like my heart is hurting. Right, you know, <laughs> but I think that it's phenomenal that you know to be in the game this long and to have you know have taken losses like that. Like yeah. that's that's hurtful for me to hear or see somebody talk about cuz I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, that's you that's know? a lot of times why I used to, you know, I used to like doing interviews. I don't like to sink back into it. Yeah. Yeah. What you call what they call the sunken place now. <laughs> <laughs> Put me there. Yeah, that's no, uh Yeah. I mean definitely like the history that you have and unfortunately mm-hmm. the the tragedies that have been is definitely, you know, we we try and get these stories, you know, and so yeah, it, it, it gets to that point. So now I definitely understand. It's, you know, because it was like the, they came back to back. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had lost my grandmama in between that. Yeah. I had almost lost my own life prior to all of that. Like, I was in a car crash, and the, my partner, Mo, Modine, rest in peace, he was driving. He got killed in the car accident. And I came out the car with a couple of rods in my legs, and that's when I was... I was already dealing with Dre. He wanted me to come out there and do the this thing. That's when I made that call. Man, I'm not doing nothing out here. The feds just hit the house over there, us on the run, this and that going on. Mm-hmm. Bought a sack. That's when mm-hmm. I went out there and was hanging around. We was kicking it. He was telling me his plans. We got in the studio, cooked up that album, did that. And he was on the way from there. He had just, we was in Sacramento living. He had just bought a house in South Salido, so that's why we took the trip to Kansas City. The little people, do people know, like, Kansas City is like one of our main stopping grounds. Mm-hmm. Like, there's never no bad blood or nothing like that. That just, you know, shit happens. You know, we went out there, and when that happened, that kind of like put a hold on, because I'm playing for a team. I know what the expectations is. So when the head of the team get cut off, then you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, it was kind of, we had to keep it together. We had to put it together. So, you know, it was difficult. We kept a push and all. Then after that, I bring cash into the fold, and then that shit happened. Yeah. So I'm really like, man, what the fuck, you know, what the fuck going on? Well, I mean, I think that it, you know, Condolences for all those losses, but yeah, that man, it's amazing that you still doing music. Yeah, you man, know, I think that's what keep me pushing. You know what I'm saying? The obligation to do it and the name of all of my fallen ones. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We still here pushing, man. Foot on the gas, no brakes. So, um, I actually we had Clyde the Mac rapper, West Oakland rapper, on here, mm-hmm. and he had he had said something. I'm not gonna say it verbatim, but he had said something like, you know. You know, it's not really a lot of people around to talk about, you know, the era that has come before us, you know, to really give that game and that knowledge of all the people who are so important to our barrier culture. So, like, you know, being that you are, you know, founding member of Mob Figures, you know, super, super important group to our culture. um, how, how, How do you keep the era alive, your era? Like, how do you you know, bring that up. Cause like me personally, like I'm young, you know, and I, re- I really was like catching the tail end of like all of those, like, you know, Jack, Huss, all yeah. the, those careers. So I don't really know about a lot of the history that comes prior to that. So like just even getting to sit here and like learn all this stuff from you is like super popping. So like, how do you just keep that era alive? You know, just in general, like for, well, I don't think that part is up to one person. I think mm-hmm. we all got to put our hand into that, especially if you're interested. It shouldn't be hard for you to find out. Because anything I'm interested in, I'm going to do the research on. Mm. And it ain't hard nowadays to just Google it. Yeah. I mean, True. Whoop, 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 you know what I'm saying? And it'll bring up 90s, early 90s rap music. Whoop, whoop, probably yeah. some stories that, you know what I'm saying, you couldn't find nowhere else. So you just got to have the answers. You got to want to keep it alive. You know what I'm saying? And, and under, 
Yeah, I think you get in, you should want to know what you're getting into anyway. Any history, you should want to know the history of yeah. anything that you get into. I think I'm being checked right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, okay. Just speaking to anybody who would, you know just, what I'm saying? Just, no, just but, I mean, that's, that's real, involved. But, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, just being in this platform is tight because I get to come face to face with all these people. You name drop all these things, so, you know, it's yeah. like... You, a lot of stuff that ain't even around them. I don't even think they had a Gavin seminars and stuff no more. You know what I'm saying? And then if there's nobody bring up it, yeah. it'd be forgotten. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't, so, know, I don't think so. I've heard of that before. I just, yeah, it, it used to be a big know. deal. I may be lying. It was in San Diego <laughs> that particular time. It used to be a big deal, though. You, you'll hear me, like major artists talking about that. So, mm. yeah, it was good for us to be at that. At that, that. Um, so, as you're talking, Key, uh, Key, as you were saying about just documenting the history or talking about the history. I may be jumping ahead of my time. I may be going too far, but I'm going to throw it out there. Would you ever be interested in maybe even getting the homies out, getting the homies together and getting the families together and doing a documentary of the mob figures or doing a documentary or being a part of documentaries? Yeah. yeah. So we might have to make that happen. We, don't, we was already putting our heads together on something like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Telling our little story. I think it'll be a good look. Yeah. I think they'll be interested in it. Uh, it's exciting. Mm-hmm. It will be very exciting. <laughs> but yeah, we um yeah, that's 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 in the works. We're thinking about it. We, we, we for sure gonna have to have Bo involved. So you know, we'll we'll put it together. We'll do a Clyde story too. Hey, hey. So you know what I'm if we did a movie, who 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 who's playing Clyde? I don't know, man. I won't play myself, but that right. wouldn't be right, though, huh? You gotta play well, yourself huh? now, but who you who gonna play when you're young, when you're a teenager? Oh, well, you know, we'll have to do our research. <laughs> I, have pick, I have to pick through the letter. I have to be somebody, you know. I can do it well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is this is all important because we don't have a lot of recollection of anything, you know, as far as what has been made in the culture in the Bay Area with, with mob music, everything. We wait for, we gotta wait for TV one to do like one or two yeah. unsung. So being here and hearing you talk about everything and and like for example, and we're gonna talk about Johnny Cash a little bit more because I feel like Johnny Cash has been somebody who a lot of people don't know enough about. Right. And also he was that star that went out too early, you know? And so uh, I want to talk more about him. I also want to talk about um, what uh, Money Gang Mob, how y'all came up with the name, how y'all came to be, and, you know, all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Let's do it. So Money Gang Mob had a really big cult following in the Bay Area. Did you expect that? Not like it was, no. I don't, I don't think we expected it because we didn't even... We, we were just doing an album. Yeah. We didn't even... I don't even think we thought we was going to even go as far as we did. Like, you know what I'm saying? Once we did that album and we got the feedback from us, we just ready to start on the next one. Yeah, well, well, money gang. Well, we're going to do it money gang mob. Let's fuck it. Let's bring our friends in. Yeah. So, yeah, we didn't, we didn't expect it to take off like it did. But it did. And it was like, because the Thiz, actually, we was popping. The, the Thiz was popping right at the time. But it was like we had our money gang thing. And it kind of like seemed like we were just... Just a little, you know, had our own little thing going at the same time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we didn't expect it to be like that. I felt like, and I said this before, um, I think I said it to Huss. I I felt like, and this might be going off a little bit, um, when after Dre died, I feel like a lot of people jumped on that high feet this train, and it was really like a lot of amazing rappers and like music, bomb ass music, you know, came out of that era. But then I feel like at the, t- the end of it, it started to go into like this weird, like you know, where it was like everybody was starting to make like it was cartoonish at times. Yeah, it was like everybody was just now they was just trying to be wild and right. like say anything, and mm-hmm. you feel me. And uh, ride that kind of like that wave. Um, was that around the time when uh, Money Gang Mob was really, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's why I kind of said like we kind of stood out a little bit from that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I mean, you know, a lot of them people who was doing that was 
fresh rappers. Like they, right. they was Steve's babies. Right. Yeah. That's what they knew. Yeah. So, you know, I can't knock that, but that just wasn't my forte. You know what I'm saying? And I was right hand with the man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, you know. That's just how it is. It's just like even now, there's a lot of these people right now is Thiz babies. Man. They came up off of that. I would consider myself a Thiz yeah, baby, she... okay? A little hypey baby, you know? <laughs> but I feel like, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, like, it was like very entertaining and comical, you know, a lot of the music you guys put out and it was like, you know, you could catch the jokes, but it was like at the end of the day, you guys are really rappers. Like, you could really rap. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, it's funny to me that you're like, you know, you so smooth and chill and cool. Cause in your music, to me, it just sound like, huh, nigga. I don't even get that a lot that I'm spunky like that in my music. <laughs> I used to be when the Mob Figure album came out, I was like that. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't get that. Like, a I lot. mean, the more recent stuff, it was it's it's like some. I of might be a little chill. aggressive. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like when you hear it. Like in my mind, I'm thinking of like, you know, the category like DMX type nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna come in here this nigga like growling and you know, uh, 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 man. I'm, 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 I'm Let me get on his track. Let's spit these dogs. Back. Uh, I chill. I, I'm not, I listen to, we used to see my playlist. Like, I listen to all kind of music. Give us, a, give us something. Huh? I mean, uh, see if I got weird. Give us something weird. Amy Winehouse. Oh, yeah. Good. That's not weird. That's classic. But baby. not normal. That's not the norm. You know what? It is. But again, we're talking about you. So, you get a little deep right here, right? right? So, I think that there are people who only listen to rap. They right, only right. listen. That's all they listen to. Right. When you research or you study music or you study these styles, you're going to listen to a wide variety of stuff. Exactly. And when that Amy Winehouse, when that album dropped, nigga, that was a cold ass album. Cold album. Cold man. in the motherfucker. I cried you know? when she died. You know, it's, I almost cried as well. Okay, well, I mean, you know, y'all might be posers. If y'all didn't really know Frank, then y'all didn't know Amy Winehouse. I'm Only a Frank, too. Okay, that's why you, know That's why you like Amy. Because she liked it. I listen, like I listen to Queen, the greatest voice ever, Freddie Mercury. So that's all. I've heard that many times. Oh, that's fucking movie. amazing. Yeah, he looks like a um, he looked like a um, Family Guy like character, like a the just real like stereotype of a. So, <laughs> man, looked just like Woody Wood. <laughs> so, hey, you gotta go. <laughs> Before the internet, we had DVDs. Right. You know, we had DVDs. We had VHS. Go Dumb USA, everything like that. That's where Trill TV uh, came from. Exactly. The DVD era. So, the tr so Trill TV for people that didn't know about a lot about mob figures that hadn't. Got a chance to listen to it because there wasn't really no downloads back then. Yeah. Um, Show TV was your introduction to a lot of people. Like, mm -hmm. well, do people still come to see this day? Like, bruh, oh, yeah. bruh, yeah. Man, you know how I many girls was introducing me today? Mama, they thought I was 12, 13 years old. <laughs> mama, I don't know. Girl, I don't fuck your mama. No, <laughs> hey, mama, but, come talk to me. But yeah, that, that was, and that was part of Drake's plan. Like, he came up with that. Like, I got this label. I want him to see who I'm working with. He yeah. was on the thing. So we did the DVD. We had the cameraman following us everywhere we went. And that shit came out right. Don't like, he, like, and then we was going to be doing the Trill yeah. TV part two. Like, yeah. we think about drive. Like, I had been on the road. So it was like different cities we go to. And we was always talking about restaurants, different restaurants. So part of Trill TV too was gonna be me and Dre like doing like going to different restaurants mm -hmm. and doing Cisco and Ebert, like Cisco and Ebert, judging the restaurants and shit. Like I like all of these plans that he had. You understand what I'm saying? So when that shit happened, it was like, ah, uh, so now I'm yeah. like back to square one. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So yeah. but yeah, we was gonna do that. Now see Nori got him a cooking show. Like I mm -hmm. like, like Dre was like way before. That shit's sick. Like a lot of stuff that mm -hmm. he like, had in his head that we were talking about. Like I see it happening on TV. And I just be like, damn, that shit crazy. That boy was way ahead of the game. Do you do you think a trill TV in this day in this climate would be even bigger than what? I mean, that's a that's a cult classic, you know yeah, what I mean? But I think that. that it would be like a nationwide, like craze type thing. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. It, it'll only get bigger if we keep if, they, if we keep doing it. Mm -hmm. I mean, because like you said, it's a cold craze. They don't they know what a cold do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so you 
uh, you were on both Trill TVs, Mob Figures. Um, tell me, what is the one of the wildest memories you have? Like what? Like, <laughs> He's right. Like just off the first <laughs> thing you think of. I want. Come on, you know I'm. A, I'm a woman. I like gossipy, juicy um, stuff. You I don't know. know. I got, you got to pick a topic. Like, like I don't know. Like, so, all right, just pick a second. What? My figure times. There's times. Money game. Give us all three. Well, let's go from one, one to one. Okay. So okay. Well, you know that famous scene um, when that. Older burgundy haired woman was like, I love this nigga. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you have. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did you really make it sound like a horror movie or something? That's how she, she, she sounded. She was coming out the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's how she sounded. I love him. She was coming up off the <laughs> but yeah, we was there, man. You got no, but that, you, I want to know what, about those situations that you experienced because I know it's I like was there that day. Like, that I'm day, not this nigga. If you got a them was pills was very strong around that time. You got a people was not in control of their feelings all the way. <laughs> like grown men would be crying next to you and shit. Right. Like so. It was That's like, uh, it was one time I think we was in Santa Rosa at a, at a um, in store. It was me and Dre and a few of the cats. And it was an old lady. It was like, she was a, like somebody's grandma. And she was standing in line trying to get the Cuddy out of autograph. And that was funny. Cause he was, he was like, Cuddy man, Cuddy. She this old lady. I'm like, she really in line trying to get the Cuddy autograph. Like he had fans, like it was like, that was something different. An old wow. ass grandma. Like she was a Diz fan. She would pull up her tea and everything. She she go crazy. Okay, mm -hmm. shout out to her. And then there's other stories I could tell, but you know what I'm saying? I don't want to be putting that. I understand that. So like that. That's why we go to the documentary. Uh, See? I've got some, I've been, I, I, you know, I've got some stuff. I'm gonna write a book. Absolutely. I'm gonna write a book. I'm gonna be able to read a lot about it in the book. Let me tell me. I need you. I need you. Okay, don't you don't gotta put nobody else's business out with your business right. when you tell me about the time when you was real smacked upon Trill TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that night we was at a. Um, first of all, I'm just to put it out there. I, I wasn't really a pure fan. I, I don't like nothing controlling over my mind because I think I'm a I'm a thinker more than a talker. So, but that night <laughs> we went out and I indulged <laughs> and um, yeah, I was real at that point in time when he seen it, he seen it cause they know that I didn't really get down like that, like that. So when he seen me and he was excited about it, like, man, <laughs> like look at this man's eyes, the cameras and shit got extra bright. And I was like, you could see me. And I'm like, really saying like, get the cameras out of my face. <laughs> I, my pill had just started kicking in. It was a long time. It was just a long time. <laughs> I mean, them, a long time. Them, them, pills days. Stand, them days, like crazy, real rock star days, man. I think pills are amazing drugs. If I could just say so myself, I can't yeah. turn up on them no we had more. Our hippie, we had our hippie era, right? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody was. We had this nation popping, baby. It was everybody, it was everybody from the Bay, all kind of sections of the Bay, with one little bundle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun, man. Look at how the, the game popping now. It came from that. You know what I'm saying? So, all of, these, all of it is beautiful. I want to. I want to talk about uh, something you said earlier. You were talking about, uh, you know, Ryder doing the mob figure days. Yeah. Like he was on the tracks, hella aggressive. You know what I mean? And now it's a little bit like you like the smooth joints that. That fresh has been putting out. What has caused Ryder J. Clyde to, to slow down, and what has been the maturation of of you as an artist and as a as, as a man, as as a grown ass man itself? Um, I, 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 I probably my lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? When the mob figure came out, I, I didn't have no responsibilities really. I was wild and aggressive. I had. O dog braids. <laughs> I was I'm fresh coming off of that. So, and then I guess, you know, as I matured and 
I kind of switched lanes, start jumping off into other things. Mm-hmm. You know, I just came into Clyde, Ryder J. Clyde. I, you know, the hoop, the hoop, rah, ha, ha. Straight to the point, lay back, take it like it is. The ladies love me. And that's how it came like that. <laughs> you know, I, I guess that's what it was. I've seen that the girls and then yeah. girls don't want to hear all this screaming all the time. I mean, I don't know. I'm a weird girl. I about to say, I mean, you, 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 you like the. No, I mean, that. like majority. I mean, you just yeah. said BMX and then like, but you know, I don't know. I don't know. I no, you're been, right though. You're right. I don't know. It's, I guess the music changed then a little bit. Like mm-hmm. back then, everybody yelled. It was shit. Niggas who didn't yell prior was screaming at the top of their lungs after Tupac died. Yeah. Like, come on, huh? I just went with the flow, man. I don't know. And then I'm just comfortable in my skin. And I think I really make music for me. Mm. I don't think I really go in there and, oh, they want a party cut. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's what it is. I kind of just, you know. Statue of the self. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like that's when the best music comes is when you create for yourself because, yeah. you know, there's people sometimes, out there like- Sometimes, you know, when you can, you can have fun and yeah. come up, you know, come up with a hit. People do it all the time. But well, you force it though. I've just, I haven't been able to get into that skin. I, there's some time to do it. Sometimes I don't get feeling like bothered with none of that shit, period. So, but you kind of cat from all the music you've done from start up to now, you're like you have a you can have a comfortable lifestyle just off your music. Yeah, I wish I wouldn't be rapping still now. I, we could have if everything was prepared yeah. right. When we sold over a hundred thousand albums on that first mile for the yeah. album. Yeah, I mean, if it was like it was now, if I could have took that and just loaded it up and waited on my check to come, hell yeah, I'd have been through. Y'all wouldn't see me now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd have ate, but like that, wasn't like that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and that's another big part of this. Like everything's changed. Everything's yeah, changed. streaming and oh, everything man. different. You know what I'm saying? I actually sold ten thousand CDs of my solos and. 100,000 in groups and this and that. And now it's just off the download. And I just have my song. So everything's different. You got to learn how to adjust the stuff. So that comes into play with me trying to get everything plus everything else that's coming on top. People losing people, trying to this and that. All of that. And we got to play a part in me not coming out as much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we didn't ball of it. I was reading earlier today on Complex. And it was saying that it was breaking down like how streaming works and how people would get paid. Um, it's like your song has to get paid, played, streamed 178 yeah. times for you to make a dollar on title. 279 times for it to get played to for you to get one dollar on Spotify. Like 786 times for it to get a dollar on YouTube. So like you said, like it's crazy seeing like it was different. We imagine if we were, if you was getting money for just streams. Back in the day, like we, it would have been a whole different story. Whole different story. That's what I'm saying. Like, game and change. And it's just different. It make everything different. It make the attitude of the artist different and everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You just gotta know, like, just go. If you know where you came from, you have a better understanding of what you're seeing in your face. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You won't be tripping all these little niggas. This is why. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. If y'all caught that. I, I don't know. I think you might have to give them. I don't think they're ready. Because I would say, would you say it again? Nah, but they they, they, they ready. They ready. And they're going to get some Rewind subtitles on this. Watch it. Y'all see it. They get it. <laughs> uh, you sleepy. That's what it is. <laughs> that weed wearing off. You, you want something to eat. Hold on. We're going to make them laugh, though. We're going to make them laugh. Feeling good. We're going to talk about this meme. Have you seen this meme that's popped up about you? Yeah, man. That about to look real political on there, man. This is, uh, I see. It's three of them, though, of that same picture, though. And for real. Yeah. Where, 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 so sad. See, that's the one I like. See, <laughs> I look yeah, like I'm just, standing for something right there. When you're out with your friends, try not to think about capitalism and systemic poverty. Facts. Where does this picture originate from? Me. In the Thiz van. <laughs> right next to the Thiz van. Y'all see? Right there. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. That, that was one of them shows we went to. And 
we would bring the bag to Sacramento. It was just like that. Like, mm -hmm. ooh, yeah. Side show, liquor store, gas station. It was the days, shows. man. Would you consider yourself woke? Yeah. Why? Why not? Why would you? Well, I'm aware of a lot of things. I read. Hello. You know, I ain't educate. slow. I educate myself. Like I said, if it's something I'm interested in, I'm going to. And you're a thinker. I'm a thinker. I don't talk much. Mm -hmm. Use my mind. So, yeah, I'm woke. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Woke as a black man could possibly be. Okay, talk about it. All right. Um, you know, well, and it's scary being woke. Yeah. So that's how you know I'm woke. Well, if you could explain. That's why I'm part time woke. Like, like just anything, knowing stuff yeah, scares me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when we first started reading that Behold the Pale Horse book and you start talking to people about it, they wouldn't want to hear more about it because of fear. Mm -hmm. Not because they are not interested. It's fear. It's like, uh, I don't want to know about that. Keep yeah. that away from me. Yeah. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. So I like to know. You know what I'm saying? Understand and have an understanding of things. It makes things more peaceful. Mm -hmm. I heard you said earlier that you saw the um, This Is America, Childish Gambino video. Mm -hmm. You watched it a few times. What did you think about that? That was creative. It was mm -hmm. art. It was art. Um, a lot of people won't get it, I don't think. Because, mm -hmm. like I say, people don't think. Yeah. They look at it and be like, this nigga dancing like a faggot. And that's all they're going to think about. Mm -hmm. But really, he's trying to show you what the mirror image of or what's of us, mm -hmm. yeah. And what it's looking like, yeah. And I actually seen a few memes today about oh, that. That was like, yeah, well, there's a lot of them funny. Yeah. Like the one from "Nigga, kill me in this stance." Right, right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, one of them. But you know, uh, I was reading uh, an interview with uh, one of the choreographers, Rwanda woman, and a lot one of the dancers. I think it's called like Guaguar Guala Guala. Uh, is a dancer it's from Rwanda. And she was saying, like, one of the reasons why they did that also is because no matter what we go through, and she's like, especially with, in, in, in African dance as well, no matter what we go through, we still dance. You know what I'm saying? There's so much shit going on. I think there's still more meaning, like you said. It was yeah, hella this, shit going on. There are people of rhythm. Yeah. I mean, but it's also, like, it's a way of expression. Like, you have, <laughs> yeah. at, at funerals, people yeah. dance. But it's, you know, yep, second a birth. Lines. You know, that's, a, it's, a, un, it's, a, national, it's a, a worldly language. Music's a worldly language. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of stuff, I think, is yeah. That's why I say I watched it a few times. It's mm -hmm. a lot that you can get out of it. I still got to watch it more than once. I saw it once and I'm like, it's going to take me a minute to process this. I need to like be in a room and just mm -hmm. chill so I can really take it in. I played the poopity scoop three times. Uh, you know, that's a classic. No, I haven't even seen the Childish Gambino video poopity yet. You know, Did I'm you a hater. The Kanye like song, no? Poopity scoop. scoop. Did you play that? The Kanye song? Poopity Lift poopity yourself? Scoop? No. Oh, you ain't even heard I'm, it, huh? I'm tapped out. Guess what? Have you get, ha, wait? Have you ever have you ever heard all of the lights in concert? Like the recorded concert, like version? him performing. Have you been? No. So let me tell you. Let me tell you. People had. I ain't. I ain't delete the music. Mm -hmm. All right. The music it take me to a place, and it still got some type of meanings to it. Ultra Light Beam. I'm, I've almost. I've almost cried listening to that song. Cause it's a masterpiece. You hella dramatic. I'm hella dramatic. <laughs> you dramatic. It is a masterpiece. Nah, but it's I'm, not, a... I'm not gonna write Kanye off because he's crazy. Now mentally, he's a black man in America who's aware. That's a mental Kanye illness. Kanye got that album coming out. Oh yeah, that album about to be fire. That's what that's about. Poopy you think so? Why, why, why do I throw the breeze the people do stupid shit on? I think he's Public really. Public. Unhinged. There, I really you think, think he's he on really the edge. Is? No, I think he's been on the edge that. for a minute. Have y'all seen the conspiracy theory tweet? Is this dude that's saying that um, it is uh, that he is in like this performing arts? Like it's like like Andy Kaufman. How Andy Kaufman, you would play a part so much that you wouldn't even know he's acting. You think it's real? It's fucking crazy. Shit. Well, they yelling at us. It's the world we're living in, baby. You never know. Yeah. I mean, it's so much shit. This, this, that's a whole other conversation yeah, in, in and of itself. Yeah, you know, I feel I regret encouraging you to roll up another one <laughs> because I know it changed. It changed yeah, the vibe because we was chit-chattering. <laughs> and now I'm, I'm forgetting on, I'm shit. I'm just smoking this little one. 
and we went on to another one. No, but I just, you know, I don't think he was outside when he had wrote it. He said he was going to roll it for me because he had the other one. He was holding it for 80 years oh, and yeah. it went out. <laughs> then I can't lie to it. I don't know. I'm slow. But mm. pass it to this fool then, <laughs> then they just start smoking without me. He <laughs> hit the wood back again. And he had like, topics, this. man. He was hitting topics, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah he was. Trying to fuck we up got, my heart. We got, we, got, we, got, we, got we got a dope crew, you know? Yeah, that's love. Um, you know where I get my hair cut. He sacked me with that. So we're going to we're gonna, we're gonna be wrapping it up. Yeah, y'all um, Before we go, flipping us off. Um, a couple things. So first, uh, I know you said Nas. You super super big into Nas, Queensbridge, all that. Yeah. What well, what's another um who's another rapper that's super influential to you as an artist? Um I said Spice no, Yeah, Spice. Oh, you said Spice. Spice Scar. Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Okay. You know that's my dad, right? <laughs> Don't I look like I could be his daughter? Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Know. Okay, so that's the pops. All yep. right. Cube. Yeah. I With think the Jerry Curl. Okay. And when he cut it off. That's the two. Yeah. yeah. Spice One, Cuban, um, Nas. That's tight. I ain't gonna front on you though. You know, I'm this is gonna be a 24 year old comment, but them some old nigga picks right there. Yeah, and I respect is. it. it I respect it. <laughs> you got to go with the ancient, man. Yeah, yeah. I like a lot of the new stuff, but you know, I'm built on this. I mean, you, you got them albums that you're gonna remember, you know? Yeah, I'm built on you this, know, man. Jack artists when I was 20 years old. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 Jay Z's Dynasty when I was when I was like 17, you know what I mean like these all have those pivotal, mm-hmm. they all have those pivotal moments. So for you, in your life around them times, yeah, so yeah, around my time when I was just coming out and doing what I do, that was the theme. Music. Exactly, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mine was uh, Keish Cole, the way it is. Okay. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, babe. <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, yeah. Tell us, tell everybody where they can find you. Anything else you want to? Highlight right well, now. Shoot. You can find me everywhere. Just Google Ryder J. Clyde. Hello. And I will be there. You know what I'm saying? But um, May 11th, y'all go get that DJ Fresh and Ryder J. Clyde. At okay. Let's go. Friday. And Friday. Yeah. Friday. Oh, it is Friday coming. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's a party. Also, I want to say that uh, Thursday, May 10th, hashtag 510 day. We at the lake. We out there. Oakland gets justification. Hello. Hashtag that. On. Hello. For real. Well, thank you so much for coming. Appreciate Dope it. Dope interview. Appreciate you feel it. me? Follow the guy. May 11th. Okay. Boom. That's our word. Dean yes. Ass. King Key. Mm. Roger J. Clyde. Be up out of here. That's like my little Peace. spin.